in Moscow, and he will tell us about Zaremba's conjecture and growth in groups. Please, Ilya. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's an honor for me to participate in this uh, seminar. Uh, I want to talk about Zarem conjecture and how this conjecture is uh, connected with growth in groups. And let me uh, firstly recall uh, you Zarem the conjecture. Um, it's about a continued fraction. We have a rush, uh, irrational alpha generally or rational uh, from zero to one, and we consider define it, uh, the, the continued fraction expansion. So the expression of this form as J are natural numbers. <clears throat> so the Rambo conjecture uh, asks that uh, uh, given a positive integer Q, uh, if there exists A which is comprised with Q, such that if we consider uh, uh, the continued fraction expansion for this rational number a over q, so it's a finite uh, continued fraction expansion, uh, then uh, there is uh, a side that all as j, which are called uh, partial quotients, are bounded by some constant. And Zaremba suggested to take this constant equals uh, 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 five. So once again, uh, we have Q and we want to find uh, the denominator uh, said that A over Q has all partial quotients uh, abounded by five. So Q is fixed and A is uh, uh, varied. Uh, so it's a strange looking conjecture maybe, uh, but uh, uh, let me say a few words about uh, Zaremba's motivation and uh, after that uh, uh, about mathematical uh, motivation, why uh, do we believe in this uh, conjecture? So Zaremba's motivation um, uh, has roots in uh, numerical integration. <clears throat> we have uh, um, uh, a d-dimensional function f on uh, this cube from zero to one. Uh, with bounded variation, uh, uh, yes. And uh, we want to approximate uh, uh, its integral by a finite uh, sum, uh, a finite weighted sum. So uh, a well-known Coxmark-Glavka inequality says uh, that uh, this expression can be estimated as uh, the variation times the discrepancy of this um, sequence x. The discrepancy uh, is defined as usual. Uh, we take the frequency of x in uh, any uh, rectangle r minus uh, the volume of rectangle, and after that we take uh, the soprano, the soprano of uh, uh, over all rectangles. Uh, so, uh, you see, <clears throat> uh, if we want to approximate uh, our integral by uh, sum, uh, uh, we have uh, this quantity which depends on uh, the function f only. And the question now, how to find x with uh, relatively good upper bound for the discrepancy? So, how, how uh, optimally find this sequence x? Uh, there is a lower bound, uh, another famous bound by Wolfgang Schmidt, uh, uh, who proved that for any set X, uh, there is lower bound for discrepancy. So not uh, uh, for any second, any sequence cannot be uh, uh, too uh, random, uh, cannot be perfectly uniformly distributed. And, uh, so the limit of, of this discrepancy is log x over x. And um, if on the other hand, you take x, your x uh, be a random set, then discrepancy uh, um, will be uh, much, uh, much uh, worse. It's just one over square root of x. And uh, there is a huge gap between lower and upper bounds. 
So the Rambus suggested the following uh, two-dimensional widening of two-dimensional torus. Uh, for simplicity, I, I consider just uh, two-dimensional torus, two-dimensional situation. So uh, you have uh, a finite number of points, uh, roughly speaking with uh, the tangent equals A over Q. Uh, A and Q are parameters, which we will uh, choose later. And uh, he proved that for this sequence X, if you consider the continued fraction expansion of A uh, uh, over Q, and denote A to be the maximum of all partial quotients as J, then the discrepancy of this sequence is log Q over Q, basically times uh, this constant, this function actually, because we don't know what is M. Uh, so you see that if M is constant, then this upper bound coincides with uh, Schmidt's lower bound, and thus uh, the choice of this R uh, X is optimal. But uh, to uh, choose this X to be optimal, you need to prove that there is A such that all partial quotients of its continued fraction expansion is bounded by uh, uh, constant M. So that was the motivation of Zaremba. If you indeed prove that for any Q there is A, uh, then you obtain um, uh, an optimal upper bound for the discrepancy. Okay, <clears throat> so what do we know about M? There is a general result of Korobov uh, who proved for uh, Q equals prime that there is always A such that A over Q has uh, uh, the continued fraction expansion such that SJ not bounded by uh, bounded by some uh, growing function, namely log of uh, uh, Q. Uh, this um, uh, this um, result actually uh, uh, it's a nice result, but I, I should say that uh, A uh, is typical here. So for almost all A, if you choose A randomly, then you obtain this logarithm. Uh, so for typical A, uh, we have uh, logarithm and uh, in the RAM conjecture, we uh, need to have deal with uh, a set of uh, zero measure. That's the problem, that's the difficulty of the Zaremba conjecture. Uh, there are further results here about uh, the distribution of this maximum. For example, Rukavishnikova proved uh, Korobov result for all Q. And uh, moreover, there is uh, the law of large numbers uh, for this maximum. Mm. For example, uh, if you calculate the number of A, say that this maximum uh, is greater than T, then the fraction of such A is bounded by log Q over T. Okay, so we have deal with the set of uh, zero measure. <clears throat> uh, let me remind you another beautiful result of Niederreiter, uh, who proved that uh, Zarem's conjecture holds for special Q, for Q of, uh, of the form two to the, to the N or three to the N with uh, M equals four, not five, but four. And for five to the end with M equals five. There are further results of uh, uh, another mathematicians. And the proof uh, 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 is based on uh, so-called the folding lemma. Uh, there are several variants of for such results. Let me write just one of them. So um, if you have uh, the continued fraction expansion uh, of A over Q, then uh, <clears throat> you have such fraction and uh, uh, you have uh, the numerator the, and the denominator, which are uh, polynomials uh, in uh, your variables uh, S1, S, S, C, S. So uh, Zarem's conjecture is just uh, a question about representation of your Q as uh, the value of polynomial, this polynomial is called, is called continuant, 
so constant uh, S1, Sj um, uh, uh, represents the Q and uh, you want to find uh, S1, Sj uh, bounded by uh, M. Okay, so uh, the folding lemma variant of uh, the folding lemma is the following. If you consider this almost palindromical sequence, you see S1, S1, S2, S2, uh, uh, then uh, this almost palindromical continuum can be calculated via uh, a half of the continuum square times x plus one. Uh, it gives you the basis of induction. If you represent Q, say, of the form to the end uh, uh, with this short sequence, then by the folding lemma choosing, I don't know, x equals one, I suppose uh, you uh, can you take uh, you obtain uh, a long continuum, <coughs> and after that uh, uh, you uh, I'm not very uh, correct here, but uh, that's the spirit of the proof. Uh, a huge uh, progress in the Rambus conjecture was made rec rather recently five. Six, six, nine years ago, by Bogdan Kantarovich, who proved that uh, the Rambus conjecture holds for almost all Q. It means that if I take Q from the segment from one to n, and uh, um, uh, uh, consider the Rambus conjecture for such Q, then there is uh, n minus this error term. Q such that uh, the Rambus conjecture holds for this Q. C of M is a constant, and uh, for uh, for simplicity, if you take say M equals uh, 50, then there is a positive proportion of Q for which the Rems conjecture takes place. So this error term is uh, very good, is enormous. For example, there are uh, uh, a lot of primes uh, such that the Rems conjecture uh, takes place. Uh, then the result, and after that, uh, uh, these dependencies, uh, this constant uh, were uh, improved by uh, several mathematicians like Frankov Kahn, Wang, Markov Winter. And uh, let me write just one result here. <clears throat> the best result uh, in the sense of this M if m equals four, then for all but uh, small of n number q, the Rambus conjecture holds. That's the result of figure can. Uh, maybe such result uh, takes place even for m equals two. Yeah, but it's close. You see. So uh, it was uh, it was the motivation. It was uh, um, it was. Um, uh, the progress relative to the Rambus conjecture, but uh, what about mathematical uh, motivation of, of, of such things? Why do we believe in this conjecture? Uh, to do this, let's consider even more general conjecture, which is called Hensley conjecture. Uh, take the following set uh, uh, of real numbers, not uh, finite uh, uh, continuous fraction, not rational numbers, but uh, uh, infinite set of um, uh, real numbers such that all partial quotients of such sets are bounded by M. Then, and uh, this is out of Hensley, you can uh, calculate the Hausdorff dimension of, of this set uh, with very precise accuracy. It's a nice result. Um, Hensley used functional analysis to obtain such asymptotics. For example, if you take W uh, two, so uh, this is uh, the Hausdorff dimension of sets with uh, partial quotients about by one and two. Then uh, uh, the Hausdorff dimension is uh, a little bit um, greater than one half, 1.53. I should say that uh, uh, the dependence of uh, WM on M of the size sort. Uh, was known by Hinchin in 30s, I think, and um, 
actually for us, uh, this would be enough. Okay, what about Hensley conjecture? <clears throat> Uh, instead of uh, this uh, set, this countertop set, it's easy to see that uh, this set has a countertype, uh, iteratively uh, defined set. Um, uh, he considered a more general alphabet, uh, alpha, finite alphabet. Uh, so now uh, my set uh, uh, has all partial quotients uh, from alphabet alpha, not from uh, numbers from one to n. And he conjectured, Hensley conjectured, that if the Hausdorff dimension of the corresponding um, uh, counter set is greater than one half, then Zaremba's conjecture takes place for uh, sufficient large Q. It means that uh, for uh, such Q, there is A, which is comprised with Q, such that all partial quotients, uh, not bounded by M, but belong to this alphabet alpha. I should say that literally speaking, this conjecture uh, is wrong, uh, doesn't hold because, um, because of some uh, local uh, modular abstractions. It was pointed by Bogan Kantarovich, but maybe this conjecture holds for this special alphabet from one to M or maybe uh, uh, model of these local abstractions. Okay, so why why this condition uh, on the Hausdorff dimension? Uh, the motivation of Hensley was the following. <clears throat> he considered this two-dimensional uh, set of uh, rational numbers. Uh, so it's a finite set. Uh, we take rational C over V all is J are bounded by M again, or belong to, uh, uh, to uh, alphabet alpha, it's not important. Uh, U and V are co-prime and U and V uh, run uh, from one to Q. Then it's is a um, uh, exercise size of uh, FM can be uh, recalculated via the Hausdorff dimension of the corresponding counter set, uh, FM of Q, uh, this high accuracy equals Q to the uh, two WM. Okay, so it's a two parametric uh, set, um, U and V vary, but um, uh, we are interested in one parametric set. So with fixed P, P is a prime, for simplicity, I will uh, suppose that Q is a prime number. Okay, so, and below as well. So uh, A is from one to P minus one, uh, and we want to find A side that all partial quotients are bounded by M. If we believe in the uniform distribution uh, in the uh, denominators, then we need to just uh, divide this uh, bound by the number of uh, denominator. So we need to divide uh, P to the two WM by P. This is uh, P to the 2WM minus one. And you see if, oh, sorry. If you see if uh, WM is strictly greater than one half, then this quantity tends to infinity. And uh, uh, it gives uh, some explanation why uh, we uh, think that Zarem's conjecture holds if we believe in some uh, uniform distribution on denominators of some, of some uh, sets, then um, uh, the random conjecture takes place. So uh, the first results um, which were obtained by uh, growth in groups um, uh, are the following. So let me recall Zaremba's conjecture once again the symptotic of uh, this Zaremba set of enumerators is the following. And we proved with Machiavit and Murphy, then uh, the same upper bound uh, takes place. So uh, for any prime P and any positive epsilon, there is M dependent on the epsilon. So all partial quotients are bounded by M. And uh, the same upper bound takes place with this uh, error. error. 
Okay, so uh, of course we need in lower bounds, but nevertheless, uh, some kind of uniform distribution takes place because it's the same upper bound. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a positive result in this direction for any p and any epsilon. There is m said that if you take uh, the continuous fraction expansion S1, Sj, you can bound all Sj up to small uh, interval in the middle. So you remove this interval of, of, of length epsilon S from the middle and you can uh, prove that all the rest uh, has partial quotient bounded by M. So up to this uh, interval, uh, the ramp conjecture takes place. Okay, so uh, it is the first uh, bunch of uh, our result and uh, uh, how we, we, we prove them. Um, I will talk about uh, it later. I will give more details, but uh, um, uh, which tools uh, we use. Um, of course, uh, the proof uh, is based on a beautiful theorem of uh, Harry Philbot about, uh, about uh, growth in SL2. Uh, so we have a set which generates uh, SL2, then either eight uh, cubed equals SL2, or we have the following exponential growth. Uh, so uh, a cubed is uh, a to the power one plus some positive uh, number c. It's a very fast growth. So it's a nice result because it says that if uh, my set in principle generates SL2, then uh, it's uh, generate uh, SL2 very quickly because at each step, at each multiplication from one to a cube, uh, we have this exponential growth. So it means that basically uh, you generate SL2 in the logarithmical number of steps, more or less. So if you generate uh, SL2, you generate uh, it uh, very quickly. Uh, even more surprising that um, actually there is a result about uniform distribution here. Suppose that we have a set which uh, not just uh, uh, generates SL2 um, of FP, but uh, 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 A doesn't correlate with any subgroup H of SL2 or even uh, with uh, all cassettes of subgroup. It means that the intersection of A with any cassette is bounded by A over K. K is a parameter which tends to infinity. Then actually you not just generate SL2, but uh, you do it uh, very uniformly. The number of solution of this equation is just expectation, right? Plus, plus the error term. Uh, it's a consequence of uh, Hilgot theorem plus uh, uh, the famous Frobenius theorem about non-trivial irreducible representation of SL2. Uh, we know that uh, the dimension of such representation is bound to be loyal like P uh, 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 minus one over two. So uh, it's a general, uh, it's a general conceptions, conception that if you have growth in the sense of Hilgot, plus you have quasi-randomness uh, quasi uh, by Gauss, actually this definition uh, uh, was given before by Sarnak and Xue and uh, before by Huxley, I think, even. Uh, so uh, if you have quasi-randomness uh, in the sense that uh, the dimension of all irreducible presentation is uh, are comparable with size of group in this sense, then you automatically have the uniform distribution. So that is our tools. One more result uh, uh, I, I need to um, uh, uh, say about it. So Hilgot theorem gives us uh, some C. And uh, after that, this C was calculated by Kowalski. And recently, rather recently, we uh, 
uh, proved this Misha Rudnev that this C can be taken equals one over 20. Uh, and even we calculated uh, the diameter of the corresponding scalar graph. Okay, so uh, this results uh, um, used uh, uh, growth and group and uh, uh, for uh, the second part I need uh, in another results uh, about growth and groups and after that I, I will give you uh, the scheme of the proof. So uh, the second bunch of our results um, uh, uh, corresponds to so-called model of Zarembo conjecture. <clears throat> uh, this theme uh, was initiated by Hensley uh, as well. Uh, so for a given prime P, now we take uh, a composite Q, uh, such that uh, Q is divided by P. So Q is greater than P, right? But somehow Q is comparable with P. So it's bound by big O P over uh, to the 30. And uh, we want to find A such that A over Q has all partial quotients are bound by M. So uh, if you take Q equals P, then you obtain the Rambo conjecture, but now Q just is divisible by P. And uh, Q is comparable with uh, P as well. So that is our result with Maschewitin. And moreover, if you uh, allow to replace the 30 by a uh, larger constant, then uh, you can uh, uh, take this M equals even two, like in, uh, in uh, Hensley conjecture, right? Uh, so, uh, there is an absolute constant C such that for any prime P, if Q is comparable with P in this sense, so Q is P to the C, again, Q is divisible by P, then uh, you can find A such that all as J are bounded by two. Okay. So that's the modular form of Zarembe conjecture. And uh, recently I uh, proved uh, 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 the following result. Uh, uh, actually, Q can be taken uh, very close to P. Q equals uh, big O of uh, P one plus epsilon for any epsilon. For any such Q, you can find A said that A over Q has bounded partial quotient. So uh, if you take epsilon uh, equals zero, then uh, you uh, obtain the Rambus conjecture and we are absolute, epsilon close to the Rambus conjecture. Uh, but uh, for me, I don't know how to play this epsilon. So I don't know completely. Close we are not. Okay, now another thing that uh, you uh, can obtain a uh, modular form of Hensley conjecture. <clears throat> uh, so now alpha is a finite alphabet uh, and uh, the house of donation of the corresponding um, counter set is greater than one half plus delta. Then uh, there is Q which is comparable with P, Q is divided by P and said that all partial quotients of A over Q uh, belong to this alphabet alpha. So you see, uh, it is interesting that um, mm, uh, this general form of Hence conjecture uh, holds for, um, for modeling. Yes, modular Hence conjecture uh, is true, but uh, general Hence conjecture is wrong. Um, Aki. <clears throat> Aki. So, uh, uh, what what do we use here? Um, I want to talk about this in a little bit more general con context. Um, uh, I want to say a little bit about Chevalier groups um, uh, or groups of lead type. For me, uh, the small is uh, the same. So uh, these groups are naturally belong to uh, 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 naturally gives you um, uh, uh, 
families, the families of finite simple groups. So by the classification of finite simple groups, any finite simple group, either uh, the prime field or alternating group or uh, belongs to um, the family of groups of Lie type. For us, uh, they will be uh, Chevalier groups or uh, belongs to one of uh, 27 uh, finite groups, which are called sporadic groups. So uh, we are interested in this, um, in this uh, uh, third. Uh, uh, point um, Chevalier groups are classified. Um, uh, there are classical groups, uh, classical matrix groups, SLN, uh, unitary groups, and so on. There are such type of groups, and also Steinberg and Suzuki regroups. Uh, I think I will skip uh, the formal definition. Uh, Chevalier groups are defined by uh, uh, the Fourier field. I think I, I will skip the definition. Let uh, let's consider um, on um, let's consider the, the simplest and uh, the main actually example for us. So SLN, um, uh, it's a Chevalier group. Uh, 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 it contains the following Borel subgroup. Uh, the the the, the uh, Borel subgroup of the upper triangle matrices, right? And we are interested not only in Borel subgroup, uh, not only in the maximal uh, solvable subgroup, but also in parabolic subgroups. Um, these subgroups, by definition, just uh, containing uh, a Borel subgroup. In SLN, it's easy to describe such subgroups. Uh, instead of alpha one, alpha two, uh, lambda one, lambda two, lambda n, you take blocks square blocks C1, C2, and uh, C something, CK. And of course, such matrices, um, such groups um, uh, belong Borel subgroups. And that is the full description of parabolic subgroups in SLN. So uh, this S1, S2, Sn uh, corresponds to uh, the partition of the number uh, uh, N. So there are two to the n minus one of parabolic subgroups, and uh, n minus one is called the rank of uh, SLN. So uh, what do we know about expansion in simple groups and uh, in Chevalier groups in group of Lie types? Uh, uh, there is a famous conjecture of Babe uh, who say that uh, if A uh, generates the whole group. Uh, then again, it generates uh, it very quickly. There is uh, n, which is uh, which has logarithmical, um, uh, which is of logarithmical size, such that uh, a to the n equals g. So again, if uh, a generates g, then it, uh, it do it quickly. Um, and for uh, groups of Lie type. We find a trend. Uh, we know that conjecture uh, of Baba takes place. So for any its result, which was initiated by Hedgott after the uh, Green Tail by the Sabo, uh, proved uh, uh, the following uh, <clears throat> the following uh, nice uh, result. So any subset. Uh, of G, which uh, generates G, G is a group of Lie type, either uh, has the following growth or A cubed equals G. And as a consequence, they uh, obtain uh, Baba's conjecture for such groups. But you see, this expansion depends on rank. So uh, actually, it works just for uh, Lie groups of small rank. Okay. So we are interested in another questions. I will talk about it later. Why uh, we need in such uh, formulation? We don't want to uh, generate the whole group G. We want to take uh, a subgroup H, and we want to find a non-empty intersection of the orbit of my set A with this subgroup. For example, I can take rather large subgroup H, like a parabolic subgroup 
Parabolic subgroup uh, have very nice structure. And uh, uh, I want to take a um, uh, uh, general A actually, uh, side that A to the N uh, uh, intersect H. Uh, there is a um, generalization of Rabinio theorem, which uh, belongs to uh, Lanza results. Uh, that for any uh, Chevalier group, there is uh, a lower bound for all uh, uh, irreducible, not really irreducible representations. So uh, this uh, dimension is bounded below by Q to the R. Q is the size of my field, R is rank. And uh, this bound is optimal it, and it's very natural. Uh, this quantity is just the index of uh, of uh, my Chevrolet group over uh, the maximal parabolic subgroup, maximal by size. All parabolic subgroups are maximal, but uh, I, I take a parabolic subgroup of maximal size. So, uh, uh, so that is the, uh, the sense of this uh, Q to the R. And in particular, this theorem says that uh, any Chevrolet group is a quasi-random group in the sense of Gauss. So a simple corollary uh, uh, of uh, uh, lanzuri zeitz uh, theorem is the following. Suppose I take any set uh, in my Chevrolet group of size a little bit uh, larger than size of the maximal parabolic subgroup, a little bit larger. Then I generate uh, uh, the whole group. And I generated quickly uh, this number of n depends on delta, just uh, one over delta, I think, uh, times some constant de depending on the rank. <clears throat> so it's very natural. Of course, uh, the maximal parabolic subgroup doesn't generate the whole group, but if I take a, a little bit larger subgroup, then I generate it all. Uh, and uh, uh, I I, I consider uh, the following equation. I consider the intersection of A to the N with parabolic subgroup and I prove the following results. So let Q be an uh, ordinal square. P is any parabolic subgroup. A is any set. And suppose that size of A is not uh, G over Q to the R, uh, but uh, G of Q over Q to the R minus one. So uh, uh, basically I divide this period bound by Q. Okay, so uh, it's a weaker condi condition and I uh, have a weaker uh, consequence. So uh, A to the N intersect P, my parabolic subgroup and again, and can be uh, estimated uh, precisely. So this one is super, uh, super important for me here. Uh, and that is the first re result about expansion in uh, Chevalier groups. Another result is the following. Suppose that we have a set uh, A of the following form, X times P. P is a parabolic group, say, and X is any set. Then of course, if I multiply A uh, by P from the right, I obtain the uh, the set A, right? If I multiply uh, A from the left, A of, the th of this form, then again obtain A. But uh, suppose that I multiply both from the left and, pro and from the right. Then uh, for, for a set, it's uh, very difficult to be uh, uh, the right, uh, the union of uh, right cassettes and left cassettes simultaneously. And that's the result. In any Chevalier group uh, uh, and any uh, parabolic subgroup, any set, either AP or PA must grow. I have this assumption, but it's uh, a stupid assumption. I, uh, I have uh, much uh, milder assumption here. Uh, it's not important. So uh, uh, either AP or PA uh, is large. Uh, it, it reminds uh, a little bit the sum product phenomenon, uh, maximum uh, of two expression uh, uh, grows. 
For example, if A is less than P, then maximum of A, P, and P, A is A times square root of Q. So it's, it grows. Uh, so uh, we are going to use such results uh, in our study of um, uh, SL2 uh, or in other words, uh, uh, in our study of continuous fractions. So how uh, a growth uh, is connected with continuous fraction? Very uh, easy and very classical. So <clears throat> if I take uh, two uh, approximation, PS over QS, uh, and correspond to the continuous fraction expansion, another continuous fraction expansion, then uh, I can multiply such matrices and obtain the following matrices. Uh, 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 the determinant of this matrix is plus minus one, so basically it belongs to SL2. So, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, I want to start the following set. I uh, take all products of such sort. Uh, I take SJ abounded by M. Right, but because I consider uh, the Rambus conjecture all as J are bounded by M, right? And suppose that uh, QS is bounded by P. So I take all products up to QS is less than P. QS is the largest number here. So all uh, elements of this matrix uh, are bounded by P. And so it's a, a fair uh, multiplication in Z, not in if P. Okay, so I consider such a set of matrices. Uh, uh, you can calculate uh, size of this A by Hensley lemma because such matrices corresponds to uh, PS, or PS and QS. So size of A is P2 minus uh, P to the 2WM. So it's a little bit less than P squared. So I have the following set of matrices uh, and to compare, uh, let me recall that the size of SL2 is P cubed and the size of the uh, Borel subgroup, standard Borel subgroup of the upper triangle matrices is P squared. So it's a little bit less than the size of Borel subgroup. That is our set of matrices. Okay, so Again, I, I repeat the definition of my set of matrices and suppose that I consider A to the N in FP, now that the multiplication in FP, and suppose that I uh, find QS minus one equals zero modulo P. Then by definition, this uh, rational number has bounded partial quotients. They are bounded by M, right, by definition. And because of uh, this element uh, belongs to A to the N, I can estimate uh, QS minus one. That is more or less P to the N, two P to the N. That's all. If I uh, find uh, 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 this element in A to the N, which is uh, zero model IP, then I solve my model of the rainbow conjecture. That's, that's all. Uh, uh, you can uh, reformulate this uh, problem in a more, uh, 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 I would say, additive way. So uh, you consider the standard barrel subgroup. It's uh, the following uh, subgroup. And you need to find a, a non trivial intersection of A to the N with B, right? Because you need to find zero here. It's a typical, I would say, uh, additive problem. Uh, you have rather random set A. I will talk about it later, why it's random. And you have a structural set B, which corresponds in arithmetical language like progression or something like that. And you dissect a random set, a power of random set with a um, structural set B. Okay, so again, uh, I, I repeat the formulation. And after that, I multiply this intersection by B from the left and from the right. I have BA here, AB a, here, and that is equivalent to the original problem. And now you see non-computativity helps us because we have BA, A, a B. And we know by our grow result that either AB or BA must grow. 
and uh, because size of a is uh, 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 more or less um, uh, p squared i break this p squared where uh, i have p to the 5 over 2 minus epsilon after that i break this barrier this barrier which is naturally given by the size of barrel subgroup and after that i apply him got gross result or representation and so on and so forth and uh, that is how we prove this result with machine so for modern Hensley conjecture we need in uh, the classification of subgroups in uh, sl2 so uh, now uh, uh, the dimension is one half plus delta so size of a not close to p squared but close to p a little bit larger than p but thanks to classical dixon um, uh, classification theory we know that all subgroups of sl2 either roughly speaking uh, uh, conjugates of uh, the standard barrel subgroup or dihedral groups or um, uh, fine groups so uh, because uh, size of a is uh, greater than p i don't care about uh, these dihedral or finite groups and my enemy is now just standard barrel subgroups so if i want to find something uh, in uh, a to the n intersect a barrel subgroup i don't need to uh, see on this small uh, object so after that uh, we apply our second growth result um, uh, we know that uh, if a has the fallen size then the intersection of a to the n with uh, any parabolic subgroup uh, is uh, non-empty with uh, effective n in our case the problem subgroup is just a barrel subgroup size of a is this one and you see thanks to this uh, lovely one i beat uh, i beat this uh, bound and hence i find a non-trivial intersection of a to the n with with my barrel subgroup b uh, so it gives uh, us the following result uh, you see I repeat it again. So, if Hausdorff dimension is greater than one and a half plus delta, then uh, I find uh, Q, which is divisible by P, and A over Q has partial quotient belong to this alphabet. So, you see this uh, condition in the sense of uh, groups uh, allows you to beat, allows to erase uh, these small and chaotic groups here. So this condition gives you uh, uh, this, uh, this thing. And finally, uh, uh, how to prove uh, this result with p to the one plus epsilon. Uh, you need to, uh, to analyze more carefully your set A. Uh, you need to uh, analyze the intersection of A with these uh, subgroups. Uh, you need to prove more or less uh, this uh, upper bound for exponential sums, not commutative exponential sums, I mean the representations. Uh, and moreover, you need to analyze not only an A, but uh, some useful subsets of A. Uh, uh, it's a little bit trickier, so I just recall your result. If Q is uh, uh, P to the one plus epsilon and Q is divisible by P, then you can find uh, A over Q such that all is J abounded by M. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>